we had a really good connection. Our friendship goes far beyond uh, football. Takes it into the end zone. Touchdown, Utah. Touchdown, BYU. Who would play Kyle in a Hollywood movie? A fit, taller version of Tom Cruise. <laughs> okay. I think he would probably, he should, he should say Dwayne Johnson for me, <laughs> right? But he would he probably uh, will. Yeah, he better. Probably The Rock. I would say The Rock. That's what he said. Really? Well, that, that's, that's the first guy that comes to mind for me. What is Kalani's hidden talent? He's a very good impersonator. He, you know, he can, he can, uh, he's got guys that he can impersonate very well and, and uh, he's very, very funny. I mean, he is a, a, a humorous guy. Tennis. Tennis? Yeah, great tennis player. What is Kyle's go-to coaching phrase? You're either teaching it or you're allowing it to happen. <laughs> You know, because one phrase might be good for one player, but not another. And he was very good at being able to determine what, which buttons to push and how to how to reach players on an individual basis. If Kyle weren't a college football coach, what would be his next best occupation? Probably like a, a like a sports anchor, <laughs> TV sports anchor, or something okay. like that. Uh, he'd probably do very well in Ultimate Fighting. You know, if he wanted to go that route. And I think he has a jawline for it. Is that a is that a, like a Sure. A requirement? Yeah, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't <laughs> hurt. I got the double chin for it, so. <laughs> What's the communication like before and after the game? In the off season, we spend time together. We golf together. Uh, we have uh, several events throughout the year that we're at uh, together, and and so uh, I try to spend as much time as we can in the off season. Once we get in the football camp, it becomes all ball, and we're all focused on what we're doing with our team. This particular week in the preparation uh, for this game, there's there's uh, no communication. We'll break when we when we uh, before the game and we leave each other before the game we'll tell him I love him and he tells me he loves me and we'll say the same thing after the game regardless of the, the out outcome. I'm excited to talk to him before the game and catch up and see how he's doing and see how his family's doing and, and uh, you know and, and Pops you know we used to call him Mr. Red I guess he's Mr. Blue now but his, dad, his dad's a great great guy. What's one of the, the biggest things that you remember him uh, telling you when you were underneath him? Always to just be myself, you know. It was it was really cool, and and uh, it's kind of hard when you're gonna be a first-time linebackers coach, you know, and you're you're basically coaching the position that the head coach is an expert at and that he played, and so I um, always felt like I, you know, like I never had to look over my shoulder because the stuff I'm I was teaching was what I learned from him. His passion for the game, you know, not that I'm not passionate about the game, but he is he is so passionate about football and. And, and just the way he cares about his players, you know, he's very, very tuned in to, to his players' personal lives and who they are as, as people, not football players, but as, as, uh, as people. And that's, that's something I always admired in Kalani. When you're not playing Utah, do you still root for them? Yep, sure do. I think it, it, it baffles some people, but um, I just, there's so many good people there that I know. We're so absorbed in our own game that week and, and the Pac-12 and who's doing what in the Pac-12 that we don't really have a lot of time to, to think about other things. Wishing bad things on your opponents is not good for the soul. So. <laughs> I agree with you. Yeah, it's okay. Just so, You should try it. Back in your prime, who's going to win? Back in, a, in my prime. Bracket, you're in your prime. <laughs> Who would win in a one-on-one -on -one battle against you and Kalani? Uh, he was a big physical linebacker. I was a little bit, or fullback, and I was a little bit of an undersized backer. You know, he definitely has the size advantage. So I don't know if I had to go head-to-head -head with him without being able to to uh, you know, elude him. I, I'm not sure I'd come out on top of that one. I know what Kyle would say, but I have to remind him that I outweighed him by probably 100 pounds. <laughs> but, but so I, you're saying you would win? Yeah, he'd of say, course. I, he'd probably say he'd win just too. Plow him over. What was your first impression of Kyle? Oh, he's awesome. He's a, it's the uh, he seems really intimidating, but he, he's not like that. And so uh, we we had a really good connection. I interviewed him uh, just you know just days after I got the the head job and he showed up in a, a big suit and everything and I knew he was a little uncomfortable in that suit but <laughs> but he wanted to make a good impression and did it the right way and my first impressions of him were just like I, I thought he would be a tough guy but mm -hmm. um, also got to see some really cool parts of him I, he's a he's a loving husband and a loving father and that's the, the side that a lot of people don't get to talk about I remember he was one of the most impressionable uh, interviews that I've ever had he made a big impression on me in such an intense rivalry how do you guys maintain your friendship? When I got to work with Kyle, he and I became really good friends and the time that we spent together and then he's always been a mentor to me. Well, our friendship goes far beyond uh, football. Uh, his father and my father were very close before my father passed and so there was a, some sort of a, 
not some sort, but a, a, a connection there to begin with. And then uh, when I met Kalani, it was uh, very obvious that uh, you know we were had a lot in common and, and uh, had a lot of uh, we thought the same way. We've had this great relationship for a, a long time now.